good day to everyone. Um, I think we will uh, have um, newcomers as well in the webinar shortly. Uh, we are going to be starting this session first. So my name is Kenny Simon and uh, today is 19th of July and we are um, starting the Mondays, Mondays week ahead webinar by Breton Academy. So uh, this is where we would be looking at the whole week ahead, but most importantly, the past 24 hours, what has actually been happening, just to guide us through uh, the sentiments of the market, whether it's a risk on, risk off, that's really important for us to understand, in order for us to also understand the trend um, that is going on, or which are the solid trends that has been going on with which uh, currency pairs, as well as instruments, including gold, silver commodities, or various others, just so that we are able to pick the right pairs uh, to trade for the day. And that is one of the most important thing. And also um, exits are more important than entry. So I want to also demonstrate that uh, onto the chart. So we are always going to be looking at the market from a bird's eyes perspective first, uh, meaning outside of the chart. And usually what I actually do is to go into various um, new sites or um, the sites that I have seen to be giving us hints on the headlines quite accurately and quite well um, in terms of um, the daily uh, risk events that are going on is actually one of it, the daily effects. But of course, we have got the CNBC as well. This is really good. Uh, we've also got the Guardian, the UK sites. But then I don't want to be putting all of these uh, on a trading day during the session because that will take a lot of time as well as uh, divert you uh, into going into over analysis. So we don't want to do that. So what we uh, usually do is use some tools on top of the news that are happening. So we can use uh, free tools like the one in um, in actionforex.com as well. Like this one here, this daily FX uh, is powered by IG Markets, for example, but I like looking at um, the headlines that they have and the headlines that they actually do right here usually focuses on what have, has, uh, have had happened the past 24 hours as well, which is really good. And this is where I would like to then marry this up with technical analysis. And then we take it from there in picking the right pair uh, with the right trend, strong trend as well. And then we go into planning it uh, in terms of its entries, exits and stop losses and various other levels that we need to see onto the chart. So now it's out of the chart time and then we'll get into the chart later on. So let's start. Uh, firstly, is to look into uh, these, um, as I've mentioned, uh, headlines. And you can actually see uh, that um, you have got the Sometimes it's featured into this box right here, but this one here uh, sometimes also carries just a generic type article, uh, education or knowledge for the traders. But then if we look at this site here, uh, we may be able to look at um, what has actually been focused on in terms of their research, their research team, the teams of experts as well. And you can see that goal is, um, is, is looking into uh, it's in the uh, in the highlights as well or the headlights and then you've got US uh, dollar as well that they are comparing it with the Asian pairs, Asian currency, sorry, and then uh, they are looking at uh, trading earnings season, so they are highlighting a couple of other things. Then when we look at another one on July 19, which is today, uh, they are also focusing on AUD USD under fire, it says, as Australian lockdowns ramp up, so then we know that things are getting really heated up with um, with the um, Delta variant um, uh, risk in Australia and it is really pushing lockdowns in a very big big way so that is uh, then pulling down the AUD quite a lot so do we actually be seeing the um, New Zealand dollar the same or not we don't know that yet so the hence the reason we want to look at uh, little hints through the news and I'm not even, uh, you know, going into it, clicking it and then reading it and all that. That should actually be done before your trading time. And that is probably the best way to uh, to, to do it. If, if not, you'll start to uh, overanalyze and then having the risk of getting distracted uh, into your daily trade. So we want to get little bits of information first. And we know that here we have got a fundamental factor that would most probably 
probably pulling pull down the AUD and usually NZD follows the AUD. So we want to confirm that. So you know that the trend is more to the downside driven by um, the risk event that is going on with the lockdowns in Australia. So that is one bit of information that we have got. Uh, the other one here is let's focus and see what's going on with, uh, with gold. Now, gold prices down with stocks. So you know that gold and stocks, you know, they're down as the US dollar gains on heaven demand. So uh, this is where we have got, uh, remember, we've actually mentioned this uh, quite a number of times uh, that whenever we have got the um, virus, uh, coronavirus uh, event risk, then US dollar becomes a safe haven. And then uh, we will see the US dollar going up and that would actually then pull down the gold side of it. So this is confirmed sort of uh, with this headline right here. And if you click it, of course, you'll get all the um, uh, experts views in exactly where you know what level to look at and everything but we want to do that uh, on our own uh, with you guys onto the charts in a while so then we can uh, lay out our our trade plan uh, of action plan of where exactly could we enter exit uh, what are the best levels to consider resistance and support that could actually fit in with your um, sls as well but then your sl needs to be plan by yourselves um, with your risk appetite, okay? So then we look at, uh, here it says US dollar outlook. Okay, we can see that um, it's just, uh, what do you call that? Uh, looking into all the uh, Asian Asian uh, side of the Singapore dollar, the Thai baht, uh, the Indonesian rupiah, the Philippines, uh, peso, they all um, is expected to fall against the dollar. So that confirms the US dollar strength as well as a safe haven um, as of today, especially when market have actually opened. So uh, when market opened earlier on. So now we want to uh, use that kind of news, which is really simplistic, right? So we know that gold is to the downside side so us dollar on the upside we've got the aud uh to the downside as well because of the lockdown so we've got that rough idea of uh what have has uh, have had happened the past 24 hours that is driving what sort of instruments down or up then we just want to have a bird's eye uh, view um, a bigger picture perspective using tools like the heat map, the action bias, or even pivot point or volatility chart and various others, just so that it can help us confirm the current trend outside of the chart. But then when we get into the chart, we start to confirm that more using our own analysis um, during the time that we are conducting that technical analysis to get a better idea, better strength of trend, as well as whether or not to enter, not enter, set up a pending order and various other things, okay? So this is sort of the flow that uh, we always will go through. And that's basically what I would like to share with you guys as well. So. Uh, let's start off with the currency heat map on actionforex.com just to get a bit of an idea on whether or not it's matching with what we have actually mentioned earlier on. So here, let's get specific into USD. Now, when you look at USD, you can actually see uh, you've got a lot of dark blues, right? So the dark blues is giving us a good hint that USD is indeed to the upside. So for those who are um, trading the other uh, currencies opposite of USD, let's say GBP or uh, AUD or various other things, um, various other uh, various other currencies, then uh, we are on the right track in a way if we are actually looking more towards the bullishness of USD and bearishness of the others. So um, here you can actually see all other pairs, all other currencies, sorry, are really strong against uh, CAD and AUD. So we can see that CAD and AUD, they are both commodity currencies um, and they are both on the downside. And we want to check that a little bit later when we get into um, AUD specifically, GBP specifically as well. So here, as we uh, focus more on USD, it's a good sign um, to actually follow what's going on at the moment in terms of uh, strength of the trend. So we can see that you've got all these columns here on CAD really, really strong. So USD, CAD. So I would like to um, just list down USD, CAD, uh, not 
immediately to go and trade it, but to actually confirm the trend onto the chart. So I would like to analyze further technically USD CAD, uh, USD AUD as well, of course, because of the current situation in Australia, lockdown is really crazy. And then we have got USD, uh, GBP USD as well, which is um, a, a good pair to also combine if at all, we are looking at uh, a lot of weakness of the GBP and a lot of um, a lot of strength of the USD. Now we've talked about GBP pairs, especially GBP USD, GBP JPY and GBP NZD as of last week. And um, it was already hinted that there's a lot of room to go to the downside, not to the upside. And I have highlighted that in uh, the previous uh, webinar recordings as well, whereby these pairs have got more room uh, to the downside, more bearish type um, um, selling power um, when we look to the left. And we will demonstrate that as well on the chart for all these three pairs as well and look into selling opportunity as opposed to buying opportunity. So that is for the USD, as we can see, USD, CAD, we want to take a look at. AUD USD, you want to take a look at as well as GBP USD. Now, um, when we look into the euro, euro is not too bad as well. I think we have got some buying opportunity, euro versus the CAT, euro, euro versus the AUD. Uh, so it's looking not too bad on these two. So I, I want to also highlight um, this one here to look at whether if we've got more time to actually analyze them as well. So you've got euro CAT, um, EuroCAD and Euro um, AUD. All right. So it does actually depend on how strong uh, the trend is, of course, for these pairs that we're looking at. And it might actually pose um, short term trades, uh, intraday, medium, or even long term. So that all depends on when we actually get to the chart charts for all these pairs to look at whether or not uh, we, um, the market, uh, trends condition should actually help decide whether or not it fits a long short term. Uh, you need to put it on pending to look at uh, edit at a later time to get triggered and things like that. Usually the market would help you decide that. So we will take a look at the charts and that would actually help you understand how does the market help you decide on what style of trading you could actually do for each one uh, pair, okay? They all have their own personality as well, personalities. So JPY, now we're looking at JPY. Now JPY is looking like it's uh, functioning as safe heaven as well. Then we've got the USD functioning as safe heaven as well. So what does that tell us? That, that tells us that um, probably, we don't know that for sure, combining USD and JPY may be a little bit risky because both are going on to the same direction. Both are functioning as safe heavens and both are strengthening uh, as the market goes on today. So it wouldn't uh, probably be, I mean, especially for me to actually combine USD versus the JPY it would be very risky, but we can always confirm that with the charts as well first, and then we can and, um, you know, determine our decisions on whether or not to enter or not enter anyway. But then uh, when we have two pay, uh, currencies like this going in the same direction, functioning as the safe heavens, it's probably not the best idea to combine both uh, two currencies with the same directions. Okay, so here we can see that it is overall, especially starting from GBP right down to AUD here, so um, versus the GBP against GBP against the CHF, CAD and AUD would actually be quite uh, good to look at. So I would also um, just highlight JPY against, against GBP, CHF, um, CAD and AUD as well. So, okay. And this is actually giving us some hints as well that um, the commodity currency seems seems to be weakening and that could also be um, having a bit of a ripple effect to the oil, both crude uh, oil WTI as well as the Brent. Uh, so that is usually it works all in the same way and hence the reason we're looking at gold as well to the downside. So we've got gold, oil, commodity currencies, everything should actually be um, to the downside, um, looking at how the market's functioning as we speak at this moment of time. Okay. 
Now that is for the JPY right there. Um, the rest, you know, you've got mixed colors here. Wouldn't pay much attention to that. Um, this one here, CHF, AUDCHF. Yes, we want to also look at AUDCHF. Okay. And this is also a good one to look at as, uh, as it is really weak in Australia, then uh, CHF, again, uh, another safe haven currency. So it should actually be to the upside. And that is good to combine a safe haven currency, CHF, with a very weak, um, um, what do you call that, currency like AUD, especially is driven by um, geopolitics, driven by risk events, especially sorry, in Australia, uh, with the current COVID situation and the lockdown that is uh, really crazy. So this is uh, probably a good combination as well, but then we won't know until we get to the chart and confirm it there. So here, it's really uh, good to see all these dark rates right here. So CAD, USD, we've already listed it down to be a pair that uh, we need to look into it uh, to consider whether or not it will give us some trading opportunities. We've got loads of AUD weaknesses here, as you can see, the only one against CAD is a little bit colorful right here, but the rest, um, I would say a majority, especially against the USD, the Euro and JPY seems to be really, really weak, uh, as well as the NZD. So AUD is seen to be even weaker than NZD. Okay, so then uh, these are the the highlights uh, of um, the currency heat map as of today. Now we want to also look at the top movers just to polish it a little bit to see uh, whether or not it is actually matching with what we have actually just uh, summarized. Now, right here as what I can see, um, you've got the top 10 movers right here and we can see that uh, we have got a lot of JPYs, as you can see, a lot of CHF as well, and a lot of USD. So that does actually uh, tell us that it's probably a risk off mode now. So uh, now the risk sentiment is on a risk off mode. So people are having a little bit of fear. Uh, fear is, is creeping in um, most probably from the COVID situation, uh, Delta variant spread in various countries. And that is basically one of the main driver of the risk off environment. So what does that actually mean? That means people are putting their money and transferring their wealth on into safe heavens. So safe heavens are, um, we have got uh, JPY, CHF, but not yet gold. So that's why we want to look at a timing for gold. So gold could possibly be uh, in the uh, vicinity as well. And uh, we have laid, laid it out yesterday as well in the session of where the buy is, right? So we want to take a look at that in the chart as well. Where are the starting point of the buy would most probably be? because people are buying low, uh, selling high, right? So if they want to buy low, then they would probably wait for a little fall for gold. If gold is going to function uh, as safe heaven as well, together with the rest of the pairs, because the pairs are already functioning as safe heaven. But because of the USD strength, it's pulling down gold as well. So I think um, as the market moves, uh, it will be more risk uh, of sentiment, but then we need to wait for the correction of USD for gold to actually shoot up. So where, when uh, roughly would that uh, would, would gold also be shooting up and when would it actually be best for us to enter the market for gold? Not now, obviously, not just yet today, now at this very minute or this very hour, but there are some areas that we can actually um, sort of predict or forecast of when roughly gold would actually be going up. So I want to share that with you and uh, just show shortly after we have actually gone on to the various other pairs, we'll go into gold as well, okay? Then we can plan uh, that ahead of time in terms of pending all this as well. So um, here we have got AUD JPY, all the dots on four time frames, uh, which basically shows us um, some hints of solidity of trend for AUD JPY to the downside, okay? But then we want to confirm the AUD JPY. So have I listed AUD JPY? No. So AUD JPY is also good since it's the first of the list. Um, you can also pick three pairs to analyze further. The, uh, the first three pairs on the, um, on the 
this uh, table right here. So you've got AUD JPY, CAD JPY, and NZ JPY. You can always uh, analyze that further as well. Uh, but what I like is I, I like to pick the pairs that has got four dots just so that the trend is a little bit stronger. So I would pick AUD JPY out of this list of 10 um, pairs, I would pick AUD JPY, uh, AUSD CAD that we've already listed it down, as well as AUD USD that we have also listed down. So these three, so AUD JPY, uh, USD CAD and AUD USD, okay, to be nice pairs to analyze further for trading opportunities. So um, these are the tools that I use and we can also go to action bias right here, okay. Okay, we have got um, two pairs that has got a straight line of uh, hints or signals saying that all the four time frames has been really strong to the downside. And these are, I will write that down as well, CAD, CHF, um, as well as AUD, CHF, which I've already listed down. So there are some nice pairs there um, offering a really good sort of trend quality, but we want to confirm that. So I want to focus on, of course, the uh, USD ones, uh, USD crosses, USD CAD, USD AUD, and GBP USD. So we want to look at the, these ones first, but let's say we are concentrating on USD as well. So you want to look into the volatility chart for these currencies that we have mentioned. So especially uh, volatility for uh, USD, volatility for AUD, volatility for the rest of the currencies that we have mentioned, like the JPY and CHF as well. So I'll go on to the four hour plus a daily right here and I look at USD, just to look at which other currencies combined with USD has got the highest uh, volatility in the market. Volatility could actually be posing both risk and opportunity. So you want to be careful in them, but it's good uh, because the volatility is always the lifeblood of the Forex market. So we have got AUD and CAD. So AUD and CAD. So if it is USD, USD versus CAD and USD versus AUD would actually pose the highest volatility. So that actually means you've got a lot more movements as well. Um, TPs and SL could actually be hit uh, faster when you are trading high volatility pairs. Okay, so now we go on to here and let's also take a look at JPY or GBP first. Let's see GBP right here. And we want to look at GBP versus the JPY. So GBP, JPY would actually be uh, quite volatile today. All right. So it's already um, stated right here. Then we want to look at both the JPY and CHF as well. So we'll start off with JPY. So JPY pairs, okay, both uh, CAD and AUD JPY. So AUD JPY, very volatile. CAD JPY as well. So CAD, CAD JPY. Okay, that would give me some hints to understand because we haven't looked into the economic calendar for the whole week. So it should actually be mirroring the, uh, the economic calendar as well, actually, um, especially if we've got high impact news today. But I don't think uh, today as of Monday, because of a Monday as well, it's quite common not having very high impact news release. But I can see that Tuesday would actually be quite crazy. Uh, with uh, economic data releases. So CHF, looking for CHF. Now CHF, again, it's AUD and CAD, uh, both commodity currency. So we can see that the um, economic uh, the data as well as news about yesterday's OPEC plus meeting would also be in there. So I think, um, I think there are hints that are going to be a little bit more negative for the oil side of it. Uh, maybe it's not resolved 100% yet on the talks in the virtual meeting that they have had yesterday uh, amongst the OPEC plus uh, leaders. So I think that are 
reasons to believe that uh, you know it's it's going to be a little bit to the downside for most of the commodities uh, but then gold uh, has got the safe haven side of it so we want to uh, monitor that as well as i've mentioned we want to monitor the best sort of entry timings of gold okay so chf aud aud chf cad chf so aud chf i've already marked that uh, down uh, right there and we have got CAD, CHF as well. So we've got some very volatile pairs as well. We've got USD, CAD on the, on the um, major crosses. We have got USD, CAD, USD, AUD, USD. Um, we've also got, um, if I'm not mistaken, CAD. No, those are not crosses. Then we followed by the uh, crosses, the um, minor crosses especially so we've got gbp jpy cad jpy cad chf aud chf and aud jpy so i would like to look at these pairs um to to confirm much more and of course we will look into the gbp crosses as well okay so i think we're done on this side of it outside of the chart so let's um okay Hi there, Mr. Alban. How are you doing? Welcome. Uh, we've started, but uh, we have this uh, session usually um, most of the time recorded as well, so I can send you the link. Okay, so welcome to my session on the Monday's um, webinar by Breton. So we're just going through outside of the chart, <clears throat> um, looking into which pair to pick. <clears throat> Excuse me. And also in terms of the trend. So now we are ready. <clears throat> to go into the chart. And um, using the MT4 right here, we have uh, spoken about oil yesterday. So uh, just to follow up on the uh, Sunday session as of yesterday, oil is looking like uh, it is heading to the downside. It's actually gone under the blue zone and it's actually um, that I'm looking at the monthly chart. So if we're looking into the daily chart itself, you can see that progress uh, to the downside. And uh, with patterns as well, with the geometric ABCD pattern, we can see that there may be an ABCD right here as well to confirm uh, that sort of fall. So I would just draw that very quickly um, right here. Oops. So that one there, and also if I pull this one here, we use quadrilaterals, and that basically means that AB's length is equal to CD's length. And then we have got a pattern that looks like a lightning bolt, uh, but then it's heading to the downside. So this is your uh, bearish a geometric ABCD pattern right here. So the D point is pointing down to this uh, here. And if we look to the left as well, if we go onto the weekly chart, uh, we can see this probably is an area of support as well. Coincidentally, we can go on to the four hour chart and we can look at this at a four hour chart as well. And you can see that uh, the end um, landing of the D point, which is your TP, potential TP as well, would actually be at the 68.52. So the selling of uh, oil, for example, um, we use psychological numbers as well uh, for the pricing. So if at all you're actually selling or thinking of selling most of the traders, uh, they should actually be thinking of exiting at least at the 68.60 area because the projected area of lending uh, for the TP for oil on the downside is at 68.52 so 68.52 52 is really close um uh, to the 50 psychological number so usually we exit um above it and that would actually be at 68.60 so 68.60 would probably be better uh, for your exit but you want to watch out for certain area of uh, support as well. And here, for example, we can see that um, this area here does actually support um, the, the potential of a reversal. So we don't want to land there uh, too close. So whatever you do, if you're actually selling your US 
uh, oil, especially OWTI, make sure you exit your 6860 area. And then we can actually look at uh, the midweek uh, webinar on Wednesday as well to look at whether or not we can ride it more uh, once it has, has actually pierced through this level of, of uh, support at 68.50. As it goes lower, uh, perhaps at 68.40, if it does, then we might be able to find more uh, selling opportunities of oil. So that is your US oil side of it. And then we've got UK oil is mirroring that. And uh, we have mentioned that as of yesterday, we've got good trading opportunities much clearer on the UK oil. Of course, it moves a little bit slower than the US oil WTI. It's more like a sister. It moves like NZD uh, with AUD kind of thing. But then the UK oil here has got um, prices very, very close at this moment of time um, to the selling zone that I have laid out in red. So it hasn't pierced through the selling zone as yet, but it has got this selling type power that we have also discussed as of yesterday, as we move into longer time frames, of course, um, because we want to analyze it using the long term uh, time frame, uh, higher time frames, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it wouldn't fit you as an intraday trader or scalper and all that. You can use this data, move into your lower time frames and trade it anyway. Okay, so that is uh, the way to do it. And here, for example, um, I'm looking at the potential of entering at 71.70 uh, as my sell entry or pending entry for a sell for the UK oil. Not at this moment of time, no spot trading for me at this moment of time personally, mainly because it's uh, kind of risky if it hasn't actually pierced through into my selling zone. So once it has actually pierced through into the selling zone, I would give it uh, a better uh, so, uh, sort of uh, solidity of the trend in terms of uh, where the market would like to take the prices of UK oil or Brent oil to the downside. So then we can look at um, areas like 66.60 as your exit area. So if you are actually looking into selling it, then the ideal pending order price would probably be at 71.70 and then looking at exiting uh, that trade or take profiting at the 66.60 zero area. So um, we don't use the psychological numbers for gold. It's a little bit more complex than that, but we are using the psychological numbers uh, for entries and exits, uh, especially for our currencies, all currency pairs, and also oil, both UK oil and US oil. Okay, so that's uh, quite interesting. I'm experimenting at the moment for cryptos as well, but uh, it's not looking that clear and that nice uh, offering high probability adjustments of price using psychological numbers. So um, we're still in the experimentation um, stage, but then using psychological numbers for entries and exits for um, currency pairs, especially all type of currency pairs has been um, going really steady for more than seven years already. And I'm personally using it. Most of the community of my students are using it as well. And it basically cuts your risk um, to more than 50% uh, to know when exactly or um, best ideal price to buy or sell. Okay, that's what we use the psychological numbers for, especially for entries and exits. So there you go, that's for UK oil. We just wanna carry on uh, for what we have left off as of yesterday, because now the market is open, so we can actually look at that. Okay, so now what we will do is we'll go on to the GBP crosses first, and let me just, Okay, we've got GBP crosses here that we've talked about and followed through as well. So we've got uh, three pairs right here, GBP USD, GBP JPY, and GBP NZD, just to follow up on what has actually happened to it because of the trade ideas, trade signals that's been shared as well, how the progress of all the prices are. We'll start off with GBP USD. Now with GBP USD, because of the strength of USD functioning as a safe haven due to uh, the increased cases of COVID Delta variant and various other uh, risk events that, that are happening 
in uh, certain countries much worse than the other, especially like Australia, for example, some other countries in Asia as well. Um, so that is basically uh, what's promoting the um, promoting USD as a safe haven. So that would actually then encourage uh, GBP to the downside. So what I would do with GBP especially is to clear up all these uh, lines that we have drawn previously. Okay. And I like moving straight onto a high time frame as well, uh, just to see what I could notice. Um, I can see that uh, this remains a very solid sort of resistance level, and we've discussed that already in um, all our previous uh, webinar sessions, especially for GBP USD and GBP crosses, uh, certain GBP crosses, because we have got all these areas right here, for example, um, is really clear. Uh, that it is a really strong resistance and then um, being powered by bearishness as well. So now at this very moment of time, we are in within a bearish zone already. And you can see that we have got um, very clearly a resistance as well as the movement of the three lines to the downside as well. If we want to make a story out of GBP USD in terms of a trend, then we can actually use the three lines. These three lines are the EMAs, exponential moving averages, uh, 50, 100, and 200, which I've been using for more than 10 uh, over years uh, steadily, especially uh, to determine the trend. So I'm not a trader that uses exponential moving averages or any moving averages as crosses to enter and all that. So it's, um, it's, it's only used as trend, uh, trend indicator. So when we see majority of, um, of uh, candles under all the three lines at one time frame, then it indicates the um, bias to the downside or bearishness or downtrend. And then we need to compare that one hour with a four hour and daily at least three consecutive time frame to see whether or not that that picture remains intact. So if we compare one hour, four hour with one hour, we go on to the four hour, we still see the same picture. We see that the three lines are going down like this. The three lines are not touching each other. If it does actually touch each other and tangled in a way that actually gives us uh, the, the feel of uncertainty of the trend. Trend's not really that solid. So if we see it apart from each other, pointing down, and then majority of candles are under all the three lines, then we can say that the four hour and the one hour sort of match to give us the hint of downtrend for the GBP USD. And then we uh, compare it again with the daily chart. Now, uh, here with the daily chart, it's a different picture. It gives us the hint that it might correct quite soon. Uh, we've got uncertainty of trend on uh, the daily chart. So yes, you may have a little bit of short-term downward trend for GBP USD, but something might actually trigger it to make a reversal. So what it is, we don't know that yet, but we can always um, get hints from the market through technical analysis by looking right and looking left. So here, for example, um, if I'm looking at the daily chart itself, I can see that uh, it's trading at 37.51, which is basically you know, um, very, very close, exactly one pip away from the 3750 psychological number. It's already at the 3750 psychological number. So usually uh, prices could actually reverse at either, we are talking about the last two digit in a four decimal place price. So 1.3750, 50 um, is where we monitor the last two digits. So 50 is one of the psychological number, 20, zero zero and 80 so we've got four sets of psychological numbers not in order uh, zero zero 20 50 and 80 so uh, these are where you know when it approaches these numbers it's usually the numbers where uh, within 10 pips or so uh, we are expecting reversal so just to demonstrate that we have got all these area right here really volatile as well um, very strong resistant area and then boom it fell so if we look at the highest candle right here um, and also the highest wick okay you can see that this one here is at 1.4203 uh, before it reversed right so it is actually only about three pips away from 4200 psychological number also this one here 
on the week itself is 1.4248, which is only two pips away from the 50 psychological number. So what that means is that um, the psychological numbers are used to actually help you enter at, a, at an ideal better price or, or, or less risk price and also to exit. So if you were to buy right here, you would actually be exiting 10 pips below the psychological number of 1.4200. So at 1.4190, you should have already exited and that would actually prevent you from um, bidding, uh, you know, get, getting into the, the negatives and then you would actually be profiting and uh, keeping yourself safe and then you can concentrate on the downward type trend and where do you actually enter. So that kind of thing. So this is what we use the psychological numbers for, which we will have, um, we will have in Breton Academy um, um, specific uh, videos that would actually give you specific tutorials on how to enter and exit the market using psychological numbers. Okay, so now let's look at using the psychological numbers as well for entry. Now we wouldn't actually be entering a cell if we are entering a cell uh, exactly on the number now. It's very very risky because it is exactly on the price or psychological number that it could reverse to the upside, could potentially reverse to the upside. So how do we actually uh, sell? we would actually then sell 10 pips if we are selling we sell 10 pips under the psychological number of 3750 so 50 minus 10 is 40 so an ideal uh, price for selling would only be at 3740 uh, but what we can then do is i like using the higher time frame to look at whether or not we've got some selling powers now uh, we might not be able to see that kind of data in shorter time frame but here for example, if I were to sell, I know that there may be a little bit of uh, selling pressure, yes, uh, but then also support is waiting for us around here at 37, um, 3720 area, if I'm not mistaken. So then, uh, or even 3710 uh, or so, so we, or 3700. So that actually means that uh, we need to, we can actually sell, but not get overly excited to sell until it goes, you know, all the way down to 3714. So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, you can actually sell, uh, but then be sure to actually exit as well and, you know, not make too much pips at this moment of time because we need um, not to expect to make too much pips from selling the GBP USD at this moment of time because it might actually just reverse uh, first before uh, reverse and then and then to come down much more because we are not sure when the USD is going to reverse as well from its uptrend. Okay, so um, here we have got a little bit of space, uh, but the selling price uh, should be at 37.40. If you want to sell right now, you can as well. That's entirely your risk. But then make sure you exit um, above 37.14 or 37.15. So 37.16, 37.18, you should actually be exiting. There is some pips there to be made, but um, not really that, that big, but uh, reasonable. About 30 pips, about 20 plus plus pips uh, you can actually expect from the downside but i would think that um, you get that more a uh, higher probability after the price has fallen to 37.40 if not it might actually reverse first because you've got this this area right here and current price is exactly on this opening price of a mother candle as well and then we've got this support right here and this is based on a daily chart so as you can see the current price is close to this area of support also an opening price of a mother candle right here so um, and also some support right here so it's not really um, that convincing or a confident type level or location to actually sell actually because it might actually reverse at this area and 37 34 is also an area where the uh, opening price of a mother candle right there on a daily chart that mother candle right there is worth about 70 pips on its own about 80 pip pips on its own so you want to watch out for that area as well. So for me personally, I see that yes, you can sell a little bit, but it is in a sort of risky type location at this moment of time, okay? So if we go on to one hour right here, just have to expect the uh, 
possibility of a reversal this moment of time. So it is trading still at 3750 psychological level. Um, also on the one hour chart, there is a tendency or a potential reversing at the, yeah, 3740 area right there is also an opening price. So um, yeah, to me personally, it's not really ideal for uh, selling it's got some very little room for selling but it's just that the potential or probability for reversal is quite high uh, right here so if i were to look at more gbp selling i think i would prefer for it to break down and go lower uh, than 3700 onwards and then i can uh, consider more selling perhaps but not very confident selling as well okay um, on the weekly as well um, I don't see that so much, but I see a correction potential. Um, if I look at the weekly chart right here, mm -hmm. there is a big pictures perspective on GBP USD. There is a bit of a cup, uh, cup type um, uh, pattern right here as well. And we have got um, not bad a potential for a cup type pattern right here. And also it could potentially turn up to be a uh, lazy Z pattern as well as a shark pattern as well if it were to move up more. So if it were to actually break out from here and go above, then we can write uh, along a shark pattern. I'll draw that later on once we have broken out there, but it's too early for that because this is a weekly chart. So what I see as a potential is a cup and handle pattern because you see you've got very strong mouth of the cup here that has made a resistance. So my guess is um, there may be more uh, negativity uh, for the GBP. And if it does actually uh, pushes or pulls down GBP much more, uh, then it could actually create the handle of the cup that usually comes down to the 50% right here, which basically means it could potentially come down to the 28, uh, 2850s area or so, um, as low as that. But then this is for the long term, we're looking at the weekly chart. So if it does actually follow through, you know, day by day going down and then more and more um, fundamental fuel, fueling it to the downside, then we can see that this cup and uh, handle pattern start materializing much more. Okay, so as of now, we want to just monitor the market a little bit and it doesn't really give us a lot of hints for entering a sell right now. We've got a little bit, as I've mentioned, but not really very confident because uh, I think it might do a, a bit of a sideways at the moment as opposed to just giving you a straight cut trend and then very strong uh, candle, mother candles and all that. Not at this moment of time, I think. So it is actually um, bound to reverse. So let's uh, continue to look at GBP, JPY. Uh, if you have no questions, any questions from anyone about the GBP USD, anything to actually share with me or ask, feel free. Any questions? No questions? If no questions, we'll proceed to GBP, JPY. Okay, brilliant. No problem, Alfred. Okay, so let's um, go on to GBP, JPY. Now, GBP, JPY on a one hour chart, as you can see, all the three lines pointing downwards. The rate one is actually 8 EMA, just an extra line. But again, I use it the same way as I use the three EMAs, just to uh, give me the hint of a trend. So we've got all the uh, candles as well under all the three lines as we move to the four hour chart we still see that scenario of bearishness of the GBP. Still candles are under uh, the three lines as well. As we move to the daily chart, then we find a little bit of um, candles moving inside the three lines, which basically is um, not really ideal to give us the clarity of trend. So now it is actually still moving downside. If we look to the right for the price action, whether or not it's close to which psychological number, we can see it's trading at 151.15. Now 151.15, uh, the point 15, that, that number 15 or 16 is basically what we use to refer to the psychological numbers. So 
15, 16 is not a psychological number, but as it moves higher, it will meet the 20 psychological number. So what that means is that um, it is trading at the moment between 15120 psychological number and 15100 psychological number, which basically means it's trapped in between these two. It needs to come out of these uh, two psychological number in order for for us to get a clarity of direction that it wants to go. So what I would do is I would lay out the line, um, one horizontal line above the current price at, at the psychological number of 15120. Okay, so I'll just do it like this. 15120. Okay. Right there and also 15100. There you go. So now, um, maybe go into the four hour chart right here. Okay, so here you can see that it's trapped in between the two psychological numbers. So for it to actually go lower or for us to enter the market with a sell, um, it needs, prices needs to first pierce through and go under 15100. So 150.90 onwards is an ideal price for the selling to take place. Now, when we go under this uh, psychological number, let's say if we look even at the weekly chart. Now, what I can see is that um, above as well, we may have some power of buying, but the power of buying above the 15120 psychological number only starts a little bit higher. Um, at 15127 onwards. So yes, maybe 15130 onwards is probably better for the buy to take place if um, we have got a bit of a correction and something is fueling the GBP to the upside. Now, if at all it breaks down under 15100 and it heads towards 150.90, then it might actually write along these mother candles right here and basically giving us an opportunity for it to actually reach as low as 15020 um, area. So I see a potential of selling that begins at 151.90 and exiting at 150.30. So that gives us a little bit of about 60 pips or so trading opportunity for the sell. So you can do a pending order on a sell at 150.90, take profit at 150.30. Okay, so that's the 60 pips potential. Stop losses, you need to multiply that a little bit more. Um, maybe if it's a 60 pip potential, then you want at least 120 pip uh, on your stop loss, mainly because it's a very volatile pair to trade. So it all depends on your risk appetite, your money management rules as well when it comes to the stop loss side of it, uh, mainly because of your risk appetite uh, and various other rules and styles of your trade. Okay, so this is basically uh, what I can share with you on GBP JPY. This is based on the weekly chart, but we've got potential, of course, for the short term uh, as well on the sell. Now, um, if we were to go on to uh, indicators and go on to the average directional movement index for GBP, uh, no change of the period right there. The default setting, we can see that on the four hour itself, we have got a uh, strength of the GBP uh, to the downside. So there is a uh, um, strength of trend um, for the through the ADX that we can actually see if we go into the daily chart as well. And let's see, even on the one hour. So the strength of the downfall seems to be there according to the um, moving uh, the average directional movement index or the ADX. Okay, so and we can see that happening there. Uh, as we go on to higher time frame, we can see that it's still working on it. Um, on the mother candles right there, we can see on the weekly chart as well, we can see the power of that uh, candle right there has got no wick to the downside as well. So that uh, does actually show the potential of it moving to the downside much more. 
okay? But your selling uh, pending order should only start from 15090 onwards um, to the downside. And uh, you can actually look into taking profit at 150.30 as mentioned. Okay, that's for GBP, JPY. Now, um, what about GBP and ZD? Now, GBP and ZD, let's look at that. Okay, GBP and ZD, we have at some point um, indicated a bullishness. It is still trading in within a bullish zone, but it is very close to the border coming downwards. And if it does actually break that, then this pattern would actually fail as well. That actually means that it wants to go to the downside and it's got more potential for us to sell than for us to buy. Then what I would do um, upon its breakout to the downside, I would erase all this, uh, cancel this whole pattern, and then we can look at uh, further um, downside type opportunity as opposed to buying opportunity, okay? But at this moment of time, it's right at the border right here. Um, whether or not it will pierce through or not, we don't know that yet. Uh, but even though if it does actually pierce through, it can actually come uh, as low as the centroid of this pattern, which is at the 94, uh, 98 or 94, 99 area, which is just one pip away from the 1.9500 psychological number. So I still see a bit of a limit uh, of the GBP NZD falling. So if it does actually fall and then there's a lot of fuel to make it fall, then it could actually still fall 100 plus plus pips up to 200 plus pips. But then it's got a bit of a limit here to find support at this very strong area of 9500, 1.9500. So yes, we have some selling opportunity until that area, but then we need to wait of uh, for the fact of whether or not it wishes to break out and pierce through this level here or it finds support and keeps continuing going upside okay so let's see we don't know that yet at this moment of time it's a little bit uncertain for gbp and zd um, it's got a lot of um, candlestick patterns that are also a little uncertain uh, and the way it moves with a lot of wicks as well in shorter time frame is not giving me a very clear hint of gbp and zd so we lay low with the gbp and zd first uh, out of all these three pairs, I think this one here is the most uh, unclear one at this moment of time, okay, for GBP and ZD. Okay, so any other questions on the GBP pairs? No questions. We can move on to one of the uh, major pairs, especially USD CAD, USD AUD, maybe. Um, also, AUD CHF, AUD JPY might give a lot of selling opportunities, but we want to check all that. So, any questions on these pairs that we've talked about? GDP, USD, GDP, JPY, and JPY, okay, all right, questions, okay, all good, so we shall move on to uh, one of the pairs, now let me see, um, perhaps we look at the majors with the USD, um, and we look at USD, AUD, USD, triggered to GBP, JPY, okay, Yes, uh, 15090 it was, right? Okay, good. It's looking not too bad. So yeah, we shall leave that. Now make sure you have your stop loss and everything ready as well. Okay, all right. So um, let's look at USD. I've got USD CHF right here. Now this one here, I've been I've drawn this pattern of mine, um, the geometric ABCD bullish pattern, and it is looking like it is on the way up again. Now it found support. This is on the daily chart, uh, so we've got the end picture right here. So it, um, it's a bit of an early day to actually look at oh, whether or not it will go all the way up there. But then this is the big picture. Um, it looks uh, like there are potentials. There's a lot of buying power in this area as well. Um, so we are looking at prices for USDCHF at 9212 at this moment of time. So 9210 would probably be uh, earlier uh, the price that we would have entered. So if you want to buy, you can still buy at uh, 92 uh now basically to enter the market and then uh your exit price um the thing is it's give me a second 
let's just take a look. All right. So now um, we can see that it's trading at 92.10. Now, for me specifically, I see a little bit of a threat in taking this trade if we enter right now because um, you've got a little bit of a short lift uh, type movement because there's some resistance right here and it's dominated by this um, bearish candle right here as well. So it, there is a potential for it to go up, reach up to the 9250s area, but it's a little bit risky because it might um, just reverse earlier at 9230s area. Okay, that is the risk to take at the moment. So yes, if you want to still buy, it is a potential. Um, maybe about 15 pips or so there is a potential, but make sure 90, 9234 uh, or 9233 area to actually just exit and re-enter the trade again later on. Uh, when I say later on, I mean um, maybe a little bit later, okay, because uh, probably 9260 onwards to actually trade and then to exit at 9290 that is the 30 pips potential that is uh, that is good much better than the one that we have right now this is for usd chf okay so um overall it looks like there's a lot of zigzag but then there is a, <clears throat> a potential for it to actually go up a lot more okay so here we take this one away and this one as well and also this one and we can see that um, right here, I see that there is another potential of another pattern, an ABCD pattern as well. So I would actually draw this one right here and see how high would it actually take us. Maybe I'll take this area here and then, okay. So there is a potential for it to still reach this area right there. So I'll just, I'm just going to, draw right here maybe adjust this okay that's cool all right so this is basically it we have got potential for for it to actually reach this area roughly as well the end we call it the point d area and that is as high as this area right here so the potential is there but we want to write along um, what fuels it on the fundamental side of it as well hence the reason we need to monitor the market too so yeah that's basically it for usd chf let's also look into aud um, perhaps AUD JPY as well. So AUD CHF first. <clears throat> AUD JPY first, maybe. There you go. So we've got AUD JPY right here. Um, from a first glance itself on the daily chart, it's looking really strong to the downside. And Okay. It's trading at 8104, which is really close to the 81.00 psychological number. So for more selling pressure, I would think it's probably best uh, for us to wait until it goes under 8100 area. So 80.80.90 would probably be a better ideal area for a sell. It's looking very clear to the downside. It's got more power to the downside. Bias is on the downside. It's also um, going under the three lines as well. Uh, let me just look at whether or not we have power of sellers at this moment of time. The only problem is that we don't have the power of sellers to actually push it um, all the way down uh, at this moment of time because when you look to the left as well there's no selling there's no selling powers recent selling powers is mostly buying power so um, there may be a potential of it wanting to reverse first uh, to do a correction and then uh, maybe to come down later on so i don't see that happening as yet on aud jpy but i do see that there is a selling zone that it is in at the moment 
right here okay so there is a selling zone that the current price is in on AUD JPY at this moment of time so yes it is actually still wanting to go down much more um, it's respecting loads of selling pressures as well selling um, type zone okay that's good GBP USD that was quite fast I think yeah GBP USD let's uh, go back and look at GBP USD Okay, so TP meaning the short TP, like maybe 12 pips, 10 pips or something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, Alfred, on GBP USD. On your cell, right? On the cell, on the short, uh, small one. Thirty seven forty cell G um thirty seven fourteen ah yes okay not bad at all yeah that's good six twenty six pips or something like that right yeah brilliant good that's a nice one yeah nice fishing for the day so it was good small fish so we want to write on big waves to catch big fishes as well so um this is for GBP JPY no sorry we want to go back to um to the AUD JPY so AUD JPY as we can see um it is actually you know going to the downside it has some selling power right there uh, but this is when we look at the monthly chart so it is potentially in a selling zone um, but I want to actually look at certain support area like this one here as a threat as well of a place or a location of reversal so that is at 7980 area so I would think at 7990 um, you can actually exit there Let's see, 79.90, okay. So 79.90 um, to the price right now is about 100 plus pips already, okay? Because we are looking at this in a monthly chart. So now um, I can see that is a potential support. You've also got another potential support. So 80.80 80 .80 is um, the psychological number right there. Another potential support is here as well. 80.33, okay? So that is another area. I'll go downwards to the lower time frames. Um, okay. Another support area would be here, and that is very close to the 8080 area so whatever you do um 8090 you need to exit if you're selling right now as well 8090 to exit 8033 to exit 79.90 to exit as well okay so then we go on to the daily chart okay daily chart seems to be a little clear from any potential support which is good so you if you're selling at 80.90 is probably better uh, selling now would actually be a little bit risky because you are very close to 81.00 psychological number you see so um, the ideal selling price would be 80.90 so if you're selling at 80.90 then you know you can also take profit at 80.60 that gives you about 30 pips potential as well so that could actually um, be your pending order uh, for AUD JPY so it does actually look like it has some power to come down but it needs more um, certainty from the fundamental side of it or maybe the economic data because I don't see it really uh, very strong at this moment in time maybe it's closing the market at the moment uh, there's a lot of disruptions as well in Australia for the stock market and everything else everything is like on lockdown so the business is going to you know suffer a lot as well especially on the manufacturing side of it because they are on the mineral side of it they're exporting a lot to china as well so that might actually be um, pulling down 
um, numbers uh, or statistics of the economic uh, type import export between China and Australia as well. Okay. All right. So that's AUD JPY. Now, what about um, let's get rid of this one here and look at Euro. Let's see. Uh, Euro AUD probably is quite interesting to look at as well. Okay. There you go. Right. So once we've taken a look at AUD, uh, Euro AUD, we'll take a look at gold, and that will probably be the last, um, the last type pair that we'll be looking at today. And of course, you guys can direct message me, send your screenshots and all that uh, to, to get my views on it, okay? All right, so uh, Euro AUD. Euro AUD, if we go on to, let's say the weekly chart or bigger time frames. Firstly, I'll get rid of all these previous drawings I've done. A cleaner chart. And you know, on the weekly uh, chart itself, you can see that it's been blocked by the 100 EMA right there. So that could actually be the resistance level uh, right there. We've got a, a very uh, sort of significant resistance level at the opening price of another candle right there at 6027 area. So it's really close to the current price as well right now. Current price of Euro AUD is at 5980s area. Okay, so it finds resistance right there. Let's say we go into the daily chart. Uh, we can see that the wicks as well is uh, produced to the upside, meaning that there's exhaustion to go up a lot more. Uh, so that could potentially be a reason uh, of why that could be a resistant area right there, mainly because of this area right here. Um, we've got an opening price of a mother candle right here. Uh, also, if we look to the left, it is at 59. It's in between 5980 psychological number and 6,000, 1.6 thousand, 1.6000 psychological level. So yes, it has a big potential of a reversal at this moment of time. So as you can see, there is not re it's not really necessary to draw your trend line so much if you use pure price action as well, uh, mainly because it's more accurate to actually use price action. So with the psychological numbers itself, it could actually give you the hint that yes, it would actually be reversing anytime, but then also your ideal um, action is to sell more than buy and if you are looking into selling then you're looking at selling at 59.90 right right now for example or 59.70 onwards so 59.70 would probably be a better selling price for euro aud and let's see uh, 59.70 and i'll mark that as a red line right here to mark your potential entry area at 59.70. Let's say if you are actually entering at 59.70, do we actually have some selling uh, power? The answer to that is yes, because if you look to the left, you have got nice uh, bearish candles, mother candles right there. So you can take the shortest one here, which also is a support level uh, by this uh, bullish candle right here as well in the middle. And that is a nice pattern, candlestick pattern as well. I've forgotten its name, but it's got a pattern right there. And that is good. And we are getting that, that area there marked as a potential um, selling zone, okay? A, a potential area that we can actually trade. So here it's marked as 58.73, 58.73, very close to 58.80. So 58.90 would probably be a better price to exit. Okay, so I'll change that to blue for support area. And then I'll change that to 58.90. Okay, there you go. So I've got 58.90 right here. So now we have got this area uh, clearly laid out as where you could potentially sell or do a pending sell order, perhaps at 1.5970 and then 58.90 for your buy uh, to actually, so for you to exit actually. So if you want to um, look at the potential right there, so you've got approximately about 80 pips potential. 
um, if I want to mark this area right here as well to exit a little bit earlier, that would actually be at 58.95. Okay, so you can choose whether you want to exit at 58.90 or 58.95. Okay, that's just entirely up to yourself because it's got a bit of a support here um, just because sometimes it wants to um, reverse a little bit earlier um, and it does mirror... Um, these previous opening price of the mother candles as well sometimes so that's why okay so there you go so we have got an area there for euro aud that's your pending uh selling price at 1.5970 and then take profit 5890 or 1.5895 okay any questions on that on euro aud any questions on any other pairs as well before we take a look at gold and that would be the last um a pair that we'll be looking at before we close the session for today. Any questions so far? You guys okay? Clear? I'm okay. All good? Yes? Okay, right. No questions. We'll take a look at gold. Okay, go a little bit messy here because we've been monitoring and talking about go a lot. So what I would do is clear the mess. So we need to clear the noise right here. Start again. Let's just get rid of all these ones here. Right, let's start fresh with a bit clearer chart. We only have the uh, three EMAs as always uh, for the for the indicators that we use. Now it's trading at 18.04 at this moment of time. As I've mentioned as well, uh, we are waiting for it to actually be at the right place for a buy, right? So it's not yet at the price for a buy. Um, buy would probably be a little bit higher, I would think, um, as well. So it's got a buy zone as well, um, but it's also in a little bit of a sell zone too. So it's actually torn in between. So it could actually be uh, for the buy or for the sell, but then it does actually depend on who dominates the market, whether it's a risk off and risk on environment. Um, my guess is that uh, the Delta variant situation would actually worsen and it looks like it's you know building up on its momentum as well. So it will increase the appetite for um, of uh, safe heaven so if that does actually happen more and more buying of jpy and chf eventually it could actually um you know increase the appetite for gold as well but the reason why it's not it has not increased the appetite for gold right now is because of the strength of the dollar so the strength of the dollar uh, also not only because of its uh, you know certain economic data that was positive uh, also because of its treasury uh, environment but mainly because it has kicked into the functionality of being a safe heaven right now because of the global agenda of the covid has actually worsened so that is basically it uh, so we are waiting for the correction of the us dollar then the goal would probably be kicking into the buy so at this moment of time if we look at the daily chart itself we are seeing the potential of it still in within the selling zone right here okay so it is still in the selling zone now, if we go into the weekly chart as well, uh, we can see that it reflects that candle right there. Okay, so I've not taken uh, the end of that candle in the weekly chart, but I just want to look at the daily chart right there. And we can see that this is uh, basically what's happening. So the correction of goal could potentially happen in this area um, here. Okay, so it could actually happen anywhere between 17, uh, give me a second. This area is 1793.95 area, um, as well as a little bit lower as, as well here. So this is an area that we might actually find um reasons for usd to fall perhaps or reason for gold to go up but mainly because of the usd or because of something that have happened in the us and then time for usd to correct so if the usd corrects itself um i i would think that it'll start to 
fall and all that along uh, when when um, the prices is really close to this area at 1792 area okay so this is just uh, my uh, sort of opinion and in, in this and i can see that this is a significant type support area uh, at the 70 1792.50 area so 1792.42 to 1792.50 area is basically a strong support area and this is where I think gold would actually be falling down to. So it will most probably come down to that level and then to actually reverse at that level. So I think this is interesting to see whether or not gold will actually go up until this point as well, as far as gold is going down. So as far as gold is going down to 1792, if you start to correct there, I think that is probably the point when um, USD strength is also going to correct uh, to come downwards. So when that one comes downwards, then this one you know, reverses upwards at that level as well. So let's monitor and see uh, this moment of time for short-term traders, intraday and all that. Uh, yes, it's still biased to the downside. I uh, still got uh, potential for the downside movement, uh, even on the one hour chart, uh, shorter time frames as well, and uh, various other time frames. So this is basically it. So we can see there is a little bit of a, I mean, as it comes down uh, words, you've got the support again at this uh, area, but that area of support right here also mirrors this opening candle right there roughly. Uh, so that is a potential support area and that actually is 1803.98. So yeah, you have got some room uh, and for it to come down a lot more. Once it has actually, come down uh, lower than the 1800 area i think it's got more and more um, room to come down to this level of support right here okay so this is for gold at this moment of time but uh, we are waiting for the correction more and as the correction happens um, I think then it gives us more hint that it wants to go out of this selling zone. As soon as it comes out of this selling zone, then I think uh, we may get more hints of uh, buying opportunity again. So we're I mean, most traders are waiting for that time, uh, this moment of time, because we do have loads of buying power um, above that selling zone uh, right there. So there may be a potential, but we need it to correct first at the 1792 area to show us that it wants to correct in, in the middle of a selling zone and it wants to actually go up more and wants to mirror this kind of move to actually go up, okay? So that's it for gold. Any questions, guys, before I end this session for today, for your Monday's session? Feel free to um, message me directly into the group, I group as well on Telegram, um, as well as direct message me on Telegram, WhatsApp as well. You guys have all the relevant contacts. Also on the Facebook group of Breton or the main website as well. You can send your queries right there. Okay. Questions, guys? No questions. Okay, Alfred. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Alvin, for attending my webinar as well. Um, and uh, we'll see you guys very soon. And uh, we will actually be catching up on um, on Wednesday session. So Wednesday session uh, is our next session, same time. And uh, we shall see you then. In the meantime, have a great pipping week, geometric pipping week. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Thank you.